Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more oxygen not included in the Frigidan farm with a thermal upgrade patch. Happy Monday to all of you, hope you are doing well. Looks like we will be playing this game for at least another week or two based on the responses we've been getting. So if you want to keep seeing the series, be sure to let me know. But alright, so where do we leave off? Right, managed to put up a lot of artwork, get some decor going so we can try to be reducing our stress over time and I do think that will work pretty well. Uh, the algae deoxidizers are doing pretty well at uh, reducing, uh, increasing the amount of oxygen in the air, and our air density has been going steadily up, so things are looking up down there as well. What we need to be worrying about right now, I think, is making sure that we are on top of all of our research needs. And we did finish researching gas piping. So, before I forget, one thing we're going to do real quick, we're going to place these gas permeable tiles along, whoops, not there, along the edges of the platforms. Now the reason we're doing this, if you don't understand, take this area for example. There's a lot of air density up here um, in these rooms and would like to flow down to the lower density in order to reach new equilibrium. But it can only flow through this one tile, which is kind of creating a pressure bottleneck in this area. By using gas permeable tiles, it still functions like a regular tile. You can walk on it and stuff like that, but it allows the air to flow through freely through it. So instead of a one block kind of bottleneck. We have a three tile bottleneck, which is far freer for the oxygen to flow. It just basically makes things a lot easier to cycle through your base. And most people I have seen on YouTube tend to do things like this, so we're going to go ahead and do it as well. Seems to work pretty well. Uh, you could also put some in the middle here if you really wanted to have good airflow, but eventually in the game we're going to unlock some mesh tiles and stuff like that. Uh, that's an insulated tile. There it is. Which can be used as a floor and a wall to build tiles and rooms, but allows fluids and gases to flow freely. And you can build your entire base out of that stuff if you really want to. So for now, the gas permeable tiles will do well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am having a heck of a time in my throat right about now. Don't know why. Probably because I just ate a Reuben. And uh, Reubens have a tendency to stick to the back of my throat. So, alright. Anyways, who? Um, alright, so one thing we want to talk about this video. <clears throat> because uh, I, I mentioned there were some changes to mealwood. Right, in the last video, as far as the harvests and whether or not seeds, you know, they cannot be retrieved, which means eventually your mealwood is going to run out, right? We talked a bit about that. Um, there is an exploit around this, which I have played with and confirmed that it works, and we will be showing you guys today. <clears throat> but, good lord, what is my throat? <coughs> Excuse me. Good heavens. Anyway, one of the uh, big exploits here is that if you allow it to be harvested twice and then dig up the mealwood before it uh, grows to harvest three, you will get the seed back, and you should be able to replant it and get three more harvests out of it as before. So it requires a little bit of micromanagement, but as long as you dig them up after every two harvests and never allow it to get to its third, you'll get your seeds back, and you should have a sustainable source of food. It's a little bit min-maxy, kind of some micromanagement that I'm not super thrilled about, but if it works, it works, right? So... <laughs> It's not so bad. Now, personally, I'm still going to try to make the whole blossom seeds work. Um, I, I think it'd be more fun to kind of move on the direction the game intends us to. And this does require a little bit of babysitting, but if we can, it's also a pretty good, reliable source of food as well. And mealwood, even if you can make it into a sustainable food source, um, you probably want to take the lice, the meal lice, <coughs> and turn them into lice loaf here, which does require water. Uh, and if you're trying to be really conservative with your water, then maybe that's not, you know, an optimal play style. Whereas the Bristle Blossoms just release fruits, which you can eat straight up, and I don't think you need to do water or processing at all, so... They're probably better in the long run if you can manage them, but you're probably going to need a lot of them. But if you're really desperate for more food, that's going to be an option for you. Now, we need to get some more fertilizer, otherwise this Bristle Blossom's not going to grow, so, so we need some people to go pooping for a little while, and uh, that should fix our issues. <clears throat> Good God, my throat. I know, I'm sorry. This is very unprofessional, I'm aware. Let's go ahead and place a supercomputer. Now, if you don't know what a supercomputer is, it is just like the research station, but it produces a different type of research. Whereas the research station produces novice research, which is what you need for a lot of the beginning tech, the supercomputer produces intermediate research, and you need a combination of both for all techs throughout the rest of the game. So we're going to need both eventually anyway, and I really want to move on into some more technology, unlock the refrigerator, unlock a whole bunch of different things. Really, that's what's going to be slowing us down in this playthrough right now, is just a lack of technology. So let's make sure we get this thing built up, pretty much as soon as we're able to. And uh, that should be good for us, I think. We are still building some more of these blank canvases and such. Hoping to get a little bit of um, <clears throat> extra artwork, extra decor. 
Stress is hovering at about 30% right now, but I'm hoping over the next couple of days we're going to find it goes down a lot more. Are we delivering? We are delivering fertilizer. Okay, we do have enough. And the mealwood is now just uh, starting to get ready for harvest, so we're going to go ahead and let all these guys come to harvest, and then we'll pick it up. We should be able to harvest it twice in this video, and then I'll show you guys if we dig them up, we get the seeds back. I don't think that there is a hidden mechanic uh, where a seed only has so many harvests associated with them individually. I have not seen any proof of that. If there is, that's a sneaky way for the game to make sure you don't exploit the seeds, but I don't think so. Pretty sure. <sighs> Turner, you don't want to just finish the painting you were working on? How? See, I don't understand you, Turner. Personally, I'm a one-track mind. Once I start something, I need to finish it, or otherwise it just drives me nuts. Well, anyway. I did forget, by the way, to mention, uh, introduce a new member of the colony, Mima. She is a bodybuilder with really good strength, which is the main reason I picked her up. Not good at pretty much anything else. Um, she's not allowed to do research, but <clears throat> she's alright. Not too bad. Pretty good strength. Something we don't, I don't really think we can train otherwise, so that's why I grabbed her. Forgot to do it last video. Someone commented on it. Thank you for that. Thank you for the reminder. I do very much appreciate it. Anyways, who? Alright, so we're delivering some water to the algae terrarium. Things are looking pretty good there. Trying to build up the gas permeable tiles. Finishing up some more artwork, which should be increasing our decor in this area, which over time will be reducing stress. You can see that Mima actually is reducing her stress as time goes on. Probably because she spent so much time in the uh, manual generator in a fairly decorated area that she started feeling a heck of a lot better about herself, which is good. I'm happy for her. Anyway, looks like the mealwood is ready to go. Let's go ahead and harvest all of this. There we go. <clears throat> and again, we're going to get one more harvest out of it, and then we're going to dig them up, get the seeds back, replant them, and see if it works. It worked fine in my other playthrough, but again, if there is a hidden mechanic to the seeds, then I'm not aware of it yet. And if somebody does know, let me know. Let's go ahead and make sure we sweep up all this lice loaf. I'm just going to let it be a priority five, but this stuff can uh, spoil over time, so we're certainly not going to want to leave it indefinitely. All right, we have a new print uh, duplicate available to us. Who do we have? Bert, a scientist, small bladder, destructive, naturally robust, quick learner. Not bad. I actually wouldn't mind getting another research person so I can start working through the novice and the intermediate research pretty quickly. But then we also have Ruby, a runner, very good athletics, tinkering, medicine. A doctor wouldn't be so bad. Scaredy cat cannot fight. Gastrophobia cannot cook which makes your three cooking absolutely worthless. And then Nails, who cannot dig, um, but is just a jack of all trades. I'm gonna go with Bert. We're gonna go ahead and print you off. I think we have enough oxygen and food coming in that I feel comfortable with this. And having some extra research actually could be kind of useful for us right now. But let's make sure that he doesn't do any art. I certainly do not want him doing that. But he and Marie, he and Marie are the only two that are going to be allowed to do research. Let's make sure we prioritize some of this cabling so we can get this stuff unlocked. I want to start working on some new tech. Um, we should probably go ahead and pick something. We could go for combustion if we want to get the coal generator. That's some more electricity, which we have been having some trouble with lately. Percolation for the electrolyzer if we want to have some more um, oxygen generation. Also start working toward hydrogen. I don't think we need sanitation sciences right now. The laboratory and the shower don't seem too important. I'm not going to mess with pressure or temperature. Fine dining for the refrigerator could be good as well. And a fertilizer maker is not so bad either. Let's go ahead and do fine dining, and then I think we'll go for combustion next. We seem to be doing okay on oxygen. Um, the electrolyzer, if you don't know, it converts water into oxygen and hydrogen. It basically takes the H2O and just splits them into their respective element. So it's a good producer of uh, oxygen at the cost of water. But uh, we're doing okay on oxygen with these algae deoxidizers. As long as we have enough algae in order to keep them running for a long time, and it seems like we do then I'm not feeling especially worried about it. We get this wire finished off. Thank you. And now let's make sure we fabricate intermediate research indefinitely. And I'm going to go ahead and prioritize level 6 on both of these. And that should be good. Whoa! That lice loaf was just hovering in the middle of nothing for some reason. Uh, we do need to place another mess table, which we will do there. And we probably should go through sweeping here because this area is pretty dirty. And it's reducing the decor quite a bit. Uh, I think we need some more storage compactors, so let's go ahead and make this kind of a storage wing. We'll do that. More gas permeable tiles being done. Can't really see the flow of the oxygen, but that should make things a lot easier, so. Cool. Pressure should equalize in the base a lot faster now. 
I also really wanted to make sure we get this done so we can kind of put all the water into one reservoir. Hmm. Okay, well. Hmm. <laughs> Should we actually worry about building up our own reservoir right now and just start pumping water into some controlled systems? We could do that. Um, it's not the worst thing ever. We could also try accessing the polluted ice, the Wolframite, which apparently is tungsten. Someone commented on that as well. Uh, it's a source of tungsten. Yeah, sure enough. All right. Well, I learned something today. That's cool. But yeah, we could try warming this area up, try to melt the ice and the snow, turn it all into water. Alternatively, we could use this as a nice cold area where we vent heat into this area. And it'll melt it over time, but... It'd also be very effective at drawing uh, energy out of our base. But at the same time, are we really that worried about things overheating? Not at this stage of the game. Eventually we will be, definitely. I've had that problem before, but right now, eh. Right now I think we're more or less okay. Let's go ahead and dig this area out and open things up. Um, we've been reaching max gas pressure up here a lot. This kind of allows us to produce more oxygen. And also just get some more copper. Kind of open the area up here. Just do what we're supposed to do, you know? We're supposed to kind of finish these uh, floors out. I don't like leaving things half finished. We'll do that. All right, not bad. And dig out that copper. And everyone needs to go to bed. Thankfully, we already produced a fifth bed, so Bert is ready to go. There we go. And let's go ahead and tell these storage compactors that they are allowed to hold anything they want. Like so. Looks like the bathroom's actually out of order until somebody uh, is able to clean it out. Which is unfortunate, because if somebody wakes up in the middle of the night and needs to take a tinkle... They're not going to find a bed they're able, uh, sorry, a bathroom they're able to use, and they'll pee all over the dang place. And I would not like that, but... Well, what can you do right now anyway, right? Uh, let's make sure we sweep this area. And you know what? Let's also sweep this area. Just kind of get things cleared out. We need to tidy this base up. Very badly do we need to tidy this place up. But yeah, we're just waiting on technology right now. That is the only thing we are waiting on. By the way, notice that the stress is reducing fairly rapidly. We're down to a maximum of 13% with Mima and Marie, who I believe had the highest decor expectations to begin with. But sleeping in this bedroom is helping a lot, turns out. So hooray! That's not so bad, is it? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, we should consider planning out some uh, reservoirs and stuff like that. How do we want to do that, though? Good question. We could do a reservoir kind of like this. Let me think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is actually about where I want it to be. All right. Do a big reservoir kind of like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Turn this into a big reservoir right here. That wouldn't be so bad. Now, one thing I do tend to do is put in an airlock here and a ladder down with the expectation that I'm not going to fill the water up above this level. And that way, on the off chance I ever need to manipulate the piping or the pumps or something like that, my duplicates are able to get in here and access all of that. But yeah, we'll turn this into a big water reservoir, pump some water into it. It's going to take a lot of electricity. It's not a very efficient way of doing things, but I like to kind of organize all my resources, personally. We'll also want another one of these at some point that will function um, as a contaminated water uh, storage area. That way we can pump that stuff into useful refining tools, such as... The uh, water purifier, or probably the fertilizer maker as well. Depends on whichever we need at the time. Do we want more fertilizer, or do we want more water? You never really know, until you're there, which one's going to be the most important. Look how much polluted air is inside this compost area. Kind of glad I walled this area off. Now, at some point, we can unlock the uh, air deodorizer, which uses sand as a filtration, um, uh, a filtration resource. And basically just sits here, and it just sucks up all the contaminated oxygen and just converts it into clean oxygen. So if we place one, like, right here, for example, we'd be able to clean this area out. If uh, anything gets through, we'd be perfectly fine. But it uses up a very valuable research uh, resource, sand. So do we want to do that right now? Probably not. But eventually, eventually it will matter. So what are you guys all working on right now? Because it feels like nothing is happening. You getting more fertilizer? Sure, okay. Are you guys sweeping anything, or are you just delivering water and doing research? It seems like that's the only thing they're doing right now. No, I take it back. They are sweeping this area up right now. Okay. They're doing their thing. Um, this part's going to be a little bit boring to watch, because I don't expect anything's going to happen for the next couple of days. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump ahead, because right now all I can do is just sort of waffle on while they clean. So I'll be right back. 
Well, that is the sound of some completed research. Let's go ahead and take a look. So fine dining is done. Now we have access to the aquatic farm tile, which I actually should probably build one and just sort of see what this does. I'm very curious. I, I have been thinking about this. Maybe this doesn't quite work with algae the way I have been suggesting in the last video, because it does say you can grow a single plant when sown with a seed. But algae terrariums do not require seeds. They just require algae. But why would you want to use this with, let's say, mealwood or bristle blossoms? This might have something to do with some of the new uh, plants that have been added to the game. We haven't found any of them yet. Not that I'm aware of. Hey, look, a bunch of puffs. Nice. I wonder if we can use that to our advantage. Thimble reed. That's something new. An aquatic plant well suited for domestication in aquatic farm tiles. Okay, so that is the kind of plant you want to do. Produces wa raw cellulose fiber and can be used in the production of clothing and textiles. Ah. All right, so, learn something there then. This is the plant we're looking for, thimble reeds, and these are the ones you want to put in aquatic areas. Fascinating. What are we going to do with that? Am I going to create a water reservoir just for farming those? How important is clothing in the game is a good question. The answer is I have no idea yet. But I'm looking forward to finding out at some point. Hey, look. It looks to me like the ice is melting here. Doesn't it kind of look like that to you? I think so. Also, I don't believe that this fertilizer used to be just kind of hovering in the middle of the air. So the polluted ice here is actually already melting and giving us some more water. I kind of expected it to be polluted water, but I don't see any signs that there's any in this pool. Very interesting. All right, well, I'm not going to start up a new research project quite yet. I'm going to give them an opportunity to sweep things up, because right now, if two out of my five duplicates are just doing research, it's, uh, it's a lot slower to accomplish any particular tasks. That said, let's go ahead and take a look at food. We can add it in a refrigerator. Let's say we place it, I don't know, let's say right here. Right here's fine. That way, we can refrigerate our lice loaf and stuff like that. And it will last a heck of a lot longer. Now, of course, that does require a bit more power. A little bit worried that we're going to run out of power at some point, but it certainly will help. Mm. Now, we did also unlock the cooking station. Converts two mush bars into one improved deep-fried mush bar. Um, I personally do not think that these are worth it at all. So all you're doing, right, is you're taking two mush bars, which are worth 1,000 kilocalories, one meal, right? You're taking two of them, so two meals, and converting them into one fried mush bar that I think is only worth 1,000 kilocalories. So you're actually getting rid of your uh, overall daily edible food in exchange for a mush bar that does not give anyone diarrhea. I mean, I, if you're really worried about diarrhea, then fine, but I, I'm, I'm not worried about it. So personally, I've never really found any use for those, uh, especially since I generally rely on lice loaf anyway. We are running a little low on food, though, and I actually do want to take the lice loaf and just continuously fabricate here so that any time we do harvest any lice loaf, we automatically convert it into a better food source. Which I think, I think that converting the lice into lice loaf is actually more uh, sustainable, a little bit more efficient than it was before. Why is there a prioritization tool associated with all of these paintings? Once they've been made, what else is there to do with them? That's a good question. I actually have no idea why that's there. I mean, besides deconstructing it, if I wanted to do that, that would be fine, but I haven't assigned any orders there. Huh. Well, okay. Now, as far as what we should research next, do we want to go for the percolation, or do we want to go for combustion? I think we're going to go for combustion, because I know that I've been having some power issues. Somebody is running the hamster wheel pretty much all day, every day. So, having that will probably help. Looks like we've more or less filled up this reservoir. Uh, a little bit, anyway. To the point where the water's not able to continue flowing down here, so... That's a fun thing. But yeah, if we can please continue sweeping this stuff up. Can we please build the refrigerator? There's too many tasks going around right now, and part of it, a big part of it, is because they're running around trying to gather up water to put into our plants, our algae terrariums, and stuff like that. They waste a lot of time every day just gathering up water. Uh, which I suppose, now that we've kind of gotten this water out of here, and it's now below the ladder, we could justify digging this area out so they don't have to quite run as far as they were before. That'll just save us some time, I think. So yeah, that'll be worth it. Meemaw, by the way, can carry a lot of stuff. I don't know if you just noticed that she was able to carry like 100 kilograms of water or something like that. Does it say what she carries at any time? I don't think so. What is this? Primary element. This substance is made of ooze. What? This duplicate is made out of ooze. Huh. Okay, yeah, she's carrying 146 kilograms of water. 
Yeah, that's a lot of water she's delivering there. And she's going to start cooking and making the lice loaf. All right. Let's go ahead and make sure this thing is connected up. Did we ever do this? We did. What do you mean, no power? Did we not build... A little bit weird. I thought we had prioritized that. Let's go ahead and higher prioritize that thing. I want to have a place to store this food, you know what I mean? And we'll go ahead and make this a level 7 priority so that all food that is uh, perishable can be stored here. Can I specify... I do not want field rations in here, but I do want lice loaf and meal, lo uh, meal lice to be stored here. Because rations are not able to be... Um, are not able to spoil. So, makes more sense to make sure that everything I want that can spoil go in here rather than take up that valuable space. Refrigerators are not very large. They can't hold a ton of stuff. By the way, notice how little we're able to get done in the base right now. Simply because, one, sweeping tasks take forever, which is one of the reasons I think strength is so important in this game. So they can carry more stuff. But also because if we have two people working on this stuff, it takes a long time. How's our temperature right here? It's quite warm, apparently, and Maria's complaining about that. Yeah, all the more reason we want to kind of open this area up so the uh, hot air is better able to escape into other areas of the base. But yeah, I guess it's a fair complaint. Having a battery right next to them is not going to be a long-term sustainable solution. At some point, we're going to want to move this somewhere where it makes a little bit more sense. But for now, once again, everyone's just kind of running around doing their thing, and it's not much. So, I'm going to go ahead and skip forward a little bit more until perhaps we're ready to harvest our second thing of mealwood and get the seeds back. All right, looks like we are prepared to harvest the rest of the mealwood. So let's go ahead and do that now. Actually, let's make sure that's a higher priority because I kind of want them to do this fast so we can end up this video at a reasonable time frame. So yeah, go ahead and do that. I did turn off the algae deoxidizers, by the way, because we're doing really well on oxygen, but they're draining a ton of power. And since we've been having so much trouble with power lately, I figured it made a little bit of sense to do that. And we're delivering a whole bunch of lice lo uh, meal lice right now, which someone's going to have to turn in some useful food. Let's go ahead and prioritize sweeping this a little bit as well. All right, now, with this meal wood, right now it says that they have a harvest remaining of one, and I'm going to go ahead and tell them to dig up all of these plants. Every single one of the meal wood. Again, once I have enough bristle blossom seeds, I don't anticipate I will continue to do this, but for now at least, this is what I want to do. So let's go ahead and dig all these things up, which they are doing right now. And, if Marie will get out of the way, Mealwood Seed. We can't really see it, but as I'm clicking around here, you can see this one, though. We are getting our seeds back for harvesting it early. So the downside of this is it's going to make the Mealwood take longer to grow by doing this. It was far more efficient back in the day when you, uh, before the Thermal Upgrade patch. Back when you were able to just kind of get the seeds back immediately after three harvests. But there we go. Now we've got our seeds back. So at the very least, we don't run out of mealwood seeds anytime soon. So yeah, if you are looking for a sustainable food source, this still does work. Just make sure you do not allow um, people to... Do, do not allow our plants to get up to harvest level three. Do not allow them to do that. And you will be just fine, from what I can tell. But yeah, now we're creating our um, lice loaf. Still doing some pretty good work on our research. Open this area up to our water. What is everyone doing right now that is taking so much time? No one's been able to fill out this room and finish these dig orders. It really takes a long time to do anything in this base right now. Kind of disappointing. And I'm trying to think of ways of making this more efficient. I suppose one thing we really could do to try and help is place storage compactors in some more strategic locations here. Um... We'll go ahead and place one down here as well. Just as they're sweeping so they don't have to run all the way up to these boxes, that might help at least a little bit. But really, I think the big deal is that they're taking so long running around and trying to get some water and store it up. Partly for the food, partly for the algae terrariums, partly for our plants, which, by the way, they never bothered to plant. <laughs> oh, there's never enough time, there's never enough hands to go around and do everything you want them to do, is there? Did we get extra mealwood seeds for harvesting these things? Or do they just use some of our old mealwood seeds? I'm not too sure. I don't think we got extras. I don't think we got any spares. As far as I'm aware, if you dig up a mealwood, you can only ever get one seed. Let's go ahead and dig this plant up. More duplicates are available. Do we want more? Uh, it's tempting to get someone like Nadia. Um, she can't build, but her strength is pretty high. Good tinkering, good digging. I'm not going to grab her right now. 
we may just kind of hold on to this printing pod until I feel like I'm able to take on a sixth duplicate and do okay. But right now, we're kind of sustainable as far as our food. As long as we have some algae, we've been doing really well on our oxygen. We're kind of okay, but I really need people to kind of dig this stuff up ASAP. And we just kind of need to be better at managing our resources and where everything's going to go. That's, that's pretty much all there is to it right now, so we'll go ahead and do things kind of like this, I think. Oops, not quite like that. boop a doop doop a doop doop And that meal wood is now officially gone, which means we can dig all this area out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Uh, I know some people have been requesting longer videos that are like, uh, I don't know, an hour long and stuff like that. Um, I'm not going to end up doing that, probably just because that's just I found that is not something that goes over well on YouTube. Um, people's attention only lasts for so long, and I can only make commentary for so long, and I kind of need an opportunity to reassess and decide what I want to create in new videos and stuff like that, so. Uh, if, if we're finding that it's taking too long to get anything done, then I'm always able to jump ahead, but in the meantime, we did finish off combustion. Next video, we'll probably get some coal generation going on. Not too sure where to place it. Maybe we should place it in the ice area, kind of insulate the area off, and just help it all to melt. Let's kind of create little mini climate change inside of this asteroid. I, I'm not too sure yet. We'll think that through. But yeah, otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you are still enjoying this series. If so, then be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. My name is Provis, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>